and welcome to Between Two Banjos, Swallow Hill Music's video cast. This is our late spring, early summer edition. I'm here with Dustin. I'm here with Barry. <laughs> I forgot. It's been a while. It's, it's been a, a few weeks. We're a little, yeah, we're out, of, we're out of practice. And we're looking forward to summer. Um, we hope you are too. We have a lot of great concerts coming your way. Um, here in-house at Denver Botanic Gardens at Four Mile Historic Park, at Confluence Park, Clifford Still Museum. Where else? Uh, yeah, Do we Commons, Commons Park. Commons, Commons Park. Park. Confluence Commons. That's yeah, right. Right, right, right over there. Uh, that sounds right. That sounds right. <laughs> All right. We hope to see you out at a concert this summer um, here in Denver. And uh, Dustin and I thought we would start off with sharing a favorite childhood summer vacation memory. So Dustin, do you have a favorite childhood summer vacation memory? Well, we used to go to my grandparents' farm in Nebraska a lot. <laughs> that was the main <laughs> summer trip. Um, but it was really fun. I feel like it was my mom's chance to let his children just run free and wild. There you go. And uh, they have um, mulberries there. And uh, yeah, it was really fun. Just Sweet. got to run around in the shelter belt and yeah, little middle of nowhere in Nebraska. Good times. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So the memory I thought of was also with my grandparents um, who lived in rural Wisconsin. And I remember the summer uh, I turned eight, so I was not quite eight. Um, we stayed with my grandparents for a week, uh, my sister and I and some of our cousins. And they took us to the county fair. And I remember um, on the way to the county fair, it was probably like a half hour drive, but in my seven year old brain, it was like 18 hours. <laughs> and we were all in the back seat and it was a thousand degrees. Of course, um, so, yeah, the yeah. in the summer. And I remember the radio playing um, Our House by Madness. <laughs> and just staring out the window at this bright sunlit sky in the thousand degree heat on our 18 hour car ride. And uh, I don't know why, but it's just one of my favorite memories. <laughs> so. <laughs> nice. so yeah, nice. so thank you to our grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we, this will be our last episode of Between Two Banjos until the fall. Think it's too ready. busy. There we go. It's too busy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, on this segment of Between Two Banjos, Dustin and I are going to talk about Swallow Hill shows that are coming up that we are excited about. And in the summer, that means in-house shows, Commons Park, um, Clifford Still, Four Mile Historic Park, and of course, Denver Botanic Gardens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Dustin, what are you excited for? Well, there's just too much going on, Barry, to pick just one. It's true. So, Greg Brown, in-house. Um, He's just one of the best singer-songwriters I've ever seen perform. He's amazing. He's not going to tour much anymore, I don't think. He says that every time he comes, though, so... Uh, but you but don't want to take that for granted. Got to catch him while you That's can. Right. Um, Hawk and a Hacksaw at Four Mile. Excited some great Eastern European-style music. Um, and that's the first outside. Shady Grove concert of the mm -hmm. year. Yep, yep, the first Shady Grove at Four Mile Historic Park show. I'm um, excited for the Violent Femmes, the very first... Uh, um, Botanic Gardens show. Mm -hmm. I saw them at Red Rocks back in Off 5 open for the Pixies. Nice. It was a while back though. I didn't know their music as well as I do now. So I'm excited to, you know, get that experience. Actually, Kijo Femi Kuti. You know, I love my Afrobeat music. Got to get some of that. Yeah. That's going to be a fun show. It's, it's a great summer. So many more to mention, but we'll stop nice. there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited about, even though I don't know if I can make it, um, at Shady Grove on Wednesday, June 20th, so that's at Four Mile Historic Park, we're going to have the Grateful Dead tribute band Shakedown Street. That we are. <laughs> I'm excited about that because I'm not a big Grateful Dead fan. I, I know their music better through other artists covering them, but I just know the culture around the Grateful Dead um, is, is something very special to a lot of people, and I love this idea of a Grateful Dead related show in the friendly confines of Four Mile Historic Park. Um, I think there's going to be a great audience that it's, night. It's the best selling one so far. That's super so. cool. <laughs> and what I'm really curious about is I know Shakedown Street, they're really popular in Denver, um, but they often play a little bit later. And when I mentioned to a friend who's a big deadhead, um, 
that they were playing Four Mile and that the show starts 6.30. Mm -hmm. um, he was excited because he's like, I'm bringing my kids. Yeah. He's like, I just never get to do that. Mm -hmm. and yeah, normally they start at 11 p.m. Right, yeah. Like <laughs> so I just think that's cool. You know, you might get to see a little bit of the passing of the torch from uh, one deadhead generation to the next. And I think it's just kind of neat. You it's going to be fun. Those guys are so. really good. I never wanted to be a big fan of a tribute band, but those guys, they're really on it, man. It's really fun. It's a fine line, but it's a... Uh, if you can if you can bring out the essence of the original artist but also bring something of your own to it it, it can be pretty special yeah mm -hmm. um so i might have something else going on that night but if i can i will be at shakedown street just to take it all in you know i'll be there you will definitely <laughs> be there <laughs> Okay, Dustin, we talked about Swallow Hill related shows that we are excited about for this summer. What is an upcoming non-Swallow Hill show that you are excited for? I'm very excited for David Byrne at Red Rocks. You got tickets? In a sense. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> um, Go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be really great, I think. I've been you know, kind of seeing some stuff that he's been doing with this tour with, you know, there's lots of choreographed dance moves. Mm -hmm. um, all the instruments are not plugged in, so there's like lots of movement. Even the drummers are like, you know, have things attached to them. And it just seems really fun. It seems like very David Byrne and he's still innovating. And, Absolutely. you know, if he's going to go out on a tour, he's going to go all out. And it's going to be really special. And last time he came to town that I remember, it was like probably about 10 years ago and I missed it for various reasons and have regretted it ever since. So. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck getting in. It'll be, it'll yeah. be all right. It'll be all right. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, a show I'm excited about is, um, so last year in our end of year review, my single of the year was this song called Thinning by a Maryland indie rock band called Snail Mail. So um, Snail Mail is this band fronted by guitar player and singer-songwriter named Lindsey Jordan, and they're playing the Larimer Lounge um, on Wednesday, June 20th, when Shakedown mm. Street is playing. Um, mm. I don't know if I'll be able to Tucky. make both of them, but I <laughs> will be at Snail Mail. <laughs> um, I think Snail Mail might be a little bit later than Shakedown Street, but, oh, I'm sure. um, <laughs> but I am excited because uh, Snail Mail just signed to Matador Records. Their album's coming out in the next few weeks. I think it's coming out before this show. Okay. Uh, but I've been listening to what is out there. They have an EP. They have some, some live in-studio performances. And... I think they I always think it's cool when you can catch a band in a smaller venue and I think they have the potential to be playing the Ogden in the near mm. future. I mean you never yeah. know, but it, it's always fun when you can see somebody on the way up and the 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 possibilities are limitless and I feel like they're a band that has that potential. So I'm excited for that. Very cool. On the next segment of Between Two Banjos, we are going to talk about the archives and the blog. And I know Dustin was busy this morning hanging some items up here in Tough Theater. Dustin, mm -hmm. would you like to share what you were hanging up? So every time we have a show where an artist has a poster, a specific, uh, ideally screen printed, handmade mm -hmm. ones, not just printed off. Um, but you know, sometimes those people too, but ideally sort of like the one of 200 type scenario. I've been trying to buy one and ha get them to sign it to Swallow Hill and get those displayed That's around the building. Cool. So we have some good ones. So here in Tuft, uh, which may have never seen an art upgrade and it's been a while. <laughs> it's it's so been a while. we have a Sierra Hole poster and I'm with her poster and a Jerry Douglas poster awesome. all signed, um, all very cool designs. Yeah. I think it'll make the place pop a little. I think you're right. I like to pop. And then I know you also recently hung up a poster from Bob Mould's concert. Mm -hmm. What room is that in? That is in 20... No, no, no. B... B... I put him on the spot. Two... <laughs> <laughs> one of the basement rooms. One of the basement rooms. One of the big ones. I don't remember which one. What, what the numbers are. <laughs> it's yeah. a golden age for poster art, was my point. It and is, yeah. it's cool that we're getting to collect that. So. Yeah. And that yeah. Was, that's a very cool poster. It's a really big one. Yeah. And hand screen printed. And it was only maybe one of 50 or something. It's a, yeah, it was a really it was small run that they did. And uh, yeah. It's so. exciting to get. And he was the coolest guy about signing it. And 
we were talking politics. It's a very political poster. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> Sweet. Um, on the blog, uh, if you haven't seen it, we've had some encounters with current and former Colorado governors. Yes, uh, we have. So we have some stories about that and even some video. Um, first was um, uh, in late April at SCFD Day at the Capitol. Wow, how many of these do I have? <laughs> the long thing. Uh, we got to uh, SCFD, standing for Scientific and Cultural Facilities District, um, from which we are a tier two organization. We got a lot of funding from them, mm -hmm. so we are very grateful to the voters of Denver and the SCFD for helping mm -hmm. uh, fund this wonderful place that we call Swallow Hill Music. Most of the funding goes directly to Between Two Banjos. A lot of people aren't aware. We weren't yeah. supposed to say that. Oh, okay. right. Um, well, we'll edit that part out. We have the technology, right? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. And we're back. <laughs> but SCFD Day at the Capitol, we had our uh, instrument petting zoo there. We were playing some tunes. A, uh, the governor, uh, John Hickenlooper, gave some remarks. And then when he was done with his remarks, we, we handed him a banjo. <laughs> And he Basically played. forced him. <laughs> yeah, into it we put him on the spot, but he was game, and uh, he played. He played with several of our members, and that was super exciting. Um, cool. So you can see video of that on at swallowhillmusic.org on our blog, and also some photos from that. And then a few weeks after that, um, at Harry Tufts' um, most re most recent event, um, he had former Colorado Governor Richard Lamb. Uh, who he knows is Dick because they've known each other since <coughs> 1964. They're just great friends, Old buddies. and they've been doing um, they've been doing a performance over the years where Governor Lamb uh, reads um, pieces of poetry, pieces of prose, items from plays, and then Harry responds to him by playing some music. And that happened a few weeks ago in the cafe. It was a sold out night. Um, it was intimate room. Um, and it was just a magical experience. Um, and so we wrote about that on the blog as well. There's some photos. Um, and I hope they get to do it again soon, either here at Swallow Hill or somewhere else, because it, it was just a really special night. Um, my favorite part about the night, as special as the um, performance was, was I knew I was going to get to interview Harry and the governor briefly before the show. And we were trying to figure out, would it be in the green room? Would it be up in my office um, on the third floor? And uh, Harry and the governor were over at Colore. Mm -hmm. And so Harry came over to get me for the interview. And it was great because it was, it was like 5.30ish. And at that time of day, um, the, the intersection of Yale and Broadway, which we're just off of, is pretty crazy with traffic. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Calori's across the street, and Harry's like, "Come on, let's go, let's go talk to the governor." And I'm like, "Okay." And um, Harry is in his early 80s, mm -hmm. and he is spry. <laughs> we ran through traffic like Frogger. I could not keep up with him. It was, it was, right. it was so cool. I was like, "Ah, I'm chasing Harry Tough," <laughs> and uh, we got to Calori safely. Um, but that was just cool to be part of that and uh, both Harry and the governor were, were great to talk to, it was a great performance and it was just really cool to be in the room with them. So, Yep, Harry knows how to put those special nights together. Okay, next um, Between Two Banjos we're going to talk about what we're listening to. Um, I've got a few items so I'll, I'll, I'll try to be Take brief. Away, Barry. Um, well, one thing that I've been listening to a lot is um, this, this Nashville uh, punk band called the Mini Meltdowns, um, and uh, I, my friend John is in the band. I don't know John all that well, but I know him better than just uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but he plays drums and sings in it, and they recently released their debut EP, just called Mini Meltdowns. Mm -hmm. And what I love about it is it's four songs and it's about eight minutes long. It's just like boom, boom, Classic boom, boom, boom. Rock, it's you know? yep. <laughs> Super catchy, really well executed, and um, I, I actually own it on vinyl. So I thought I would I would show you how I got it from um, in the mail. Um, do a little unboxing here. So here's here's the 45. <laughs> nice. So yep, and uh, you know, record in there. Some some cool record art. That's really cool. So. Um, 
Yeah. And then, and then what I like, see, this is the advantage when you order vinyl, you get things like, uh, they're, they're based out of Milwaukee, uh, Goodland Records. Uh, so I got a Goodland Records sticker. Um, I got a mini Meltdown sticker. I think I paid like five bucks for this too. I was, gonna, is, I was is, about to ask, because this is, because sometimes 45s, it's just cost per head. You know, sometimes yeah. I'm like, uh, like I'm not spending $12. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. And a button. So I was kind of geeking out when I got this package in the mail. It was, it was just kind of a nice little like treat yourself moment. Yeah, it's kind of like more how it used to be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's mini meltdowns. I know they're on Spotify. Um, you can order the 45 on their Bandcamp page. Um, cool. You can also, uh, I think, do a pay what you want thing on Bandcamp if you want to kind of spread, spread the joy a little bit. Um, and then the other thing I've been listening to a ton is uh, Trampled by Turtles are back with their first album in a few mm. years. They, they were on a hiatus. It was maybe three, four years long. It, yeah, I was going to say, it seems like a while since I've heard from them. Yeah. And then the lead guy was doing the Dead Man, Dead Man winner, winner. Yeah. which was a, a cool solo project. But um, Trampled by Turtles are back. I know they're touring this summer. And what I liked is, even though they had the hiatus, um, it's not really like a return to form or anything. It just kind of sounds like the next album. Hmm. And they've been one of my favorite bands for the last 10 years. And it just sounds like the next album. And once it came out, I just started playing it. And I just, when that happens, I just don't stop listening to them. For whatever reason, there's the right alchemy right. of bluegrass instruments, a little bit of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. I think they're from the upper Midwest, so I can hear the cold in their bones. Right, right. Um, <laughs> and it's a great album. Um, I can think of four or five tunes off that record that will just be Trampled by Turtles classics. So nice. that album is called Life is Good on the Open Road. Nice. So, and okay. I'm hoping to get a copy of it for Father's Day. <laughs> Subtle hints. <laughs> so, so that's what I'm listening to. Nice. Uh, Dustin, what are you listening to? Well, Barry, I just this kind of just hit me. New segment time. What? It's time for a new segment. We're gonna do a new segment. I, we did not. We didn't talk about this. I know. I'm sorry. I I'm jumping out a little bit here, but you hear me new, out here. Hear me new out. New segment. Hear okay. Dustin does Dylan. Dustin does Dylan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, or D Dustin on Dylan. Dustin on Dylan. Well, those both have a certain. Dustin's Diamond them. Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on. We'll that. work. Okay. But basically, I'm constantly listening to Bob Dylan bootleg shows. You are. Yeah. There's there's always several on my. I have an entire window with multiple tabs open. There you are. He's your REM. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Dustin doesn't let me talk about REM, so I'm going to stop talking about REM right now. He can, it's, you know, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so, anyway, so I thought I'd talk about today, June 27th, 2011. Okay. 2011 is possibly my favorite Dylan performance year. Nice. He was just on it, his voice sounded great, uh, the song selection was rotating, uh, he was playing a lot of guitar, a lot of harmonica, and the organ-y sounding keyboard. Um, which is my favorite of all the things he did, but he was switching a lot. Um, the arrangements were just really dynamic and interesting of the songs. Um, was that a Red Rock show? Or? So this show actually took place in, I believe you said Odense, Denmark. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not one I saw. Show. Gotcha. It's not one I saw. Gotcha. It's one that I found online. Cool. So there's the Crystal Cat Records, which is like a bootleg record company. Well, I even if I tried to fi to pay for one, you can't. You can't. Really. <laughs> right. You, could, you find the page, but you can't actually like buy it. It's like where. a Dylan service. Yeah. So you, right. anyway, so I, I don't condone downloading. Okay. And a lot of this shows on YouTube actually, if you can find it. Um, don't do drugs. Stay in school. Yeah. Don't download music. Yeah. But that's right. Unless it's an obscure Bob Dylan show that's incredible. But anyway, the recording's just really incredible that you can find, and he's just, there's some great versions. His harmonica playing on Forgetful Heart and Ballad of a Thin Man is just really awesome. Cool. Um, he's doing a center stage holding the mic thing. Uh, his guitar playing, which I love, his electric guitar playing. It's scronky, it's weird. He's even occasionally in key on this show. And, and he's uh, still on. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, his uh, uh, Things Have Changed is really great. Um, was there, what, was he touring behind an album or was it just? This was right before Tempest came out. Okay, cool, so I know that album. 
not doing any of those songs right. yet, but he's doing stuff from Together Through Life. Okay. And, and uh, it's it's a pretty broad thing. He actually even does The Man in Me from the, you know the, his early 70s. Uh, which one is that? Um, oh, God, it'll hit me. But um, yeah, and then he, he's doing, he does Rainy Day Women, you know, which is really fun. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's a lot of newer, or, you know, two, 2001 and up. Cool. Which yeah. material. Which is Great so, era. Yeah. So. And uh, yeah, his guitar playing is just real weird and out there, but it's great. Um, Boots of Spanish Leather, he really, it's a really cool version with Donnie Heron, who's his band's multi instrumentalist on, bi on like a violin or a viola. Cool. And, yeah. It's really cool. It's a great show. June 27th, 2011. You can find it if you try. Dustin's Diamond Dylan. We'll work on the name. <laughs> Okay, so that does it for another installment of Between Two Banjos. Uh, we will be back in the fall, uh, September-ish. We know you will all be waiting with bated breath. That's right. Uh, quick final thought. Uh, Dustin and I both just saw the new Star Wars movie, Chewie, which is the origin story about Chewbacca. Uh, Dustin, what'd you think? I mean, when Chewie reunites with his litter of... Um, Chewbacca puppies, I believe they're called. They're just it's kits, kits, yeah. right? The kits, Wookie yeah. kits, the Wookie kits. Yeah. It's just <sighs> yeah, not a dry. In the house. Hits you, hits you where it hurts. So, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you're into that sort of thing, Go I give it a it. thumbs up. Don't miss it. I give it two. Have and a that's great Barry's <laughs> final thoughts. Oh wait, sorry, you were doing something. Else. Go ahead. <laughs> Have a great summer. <laughs> Roll music. Where's my juice? Where's my juice? <laughs>